Hello friends, I welcome you on Baiju's Exam Prep, India's most comprehensive preparation platform for all the engineers. All the candidates who are joining me live, just quickly confirm your presence in the comment section and tell me whether my audio, visual quality, everything is clear so that we can start with the session. Dosto, aap sabka swagat hai Baiju's Exam Prep, India's most comprehensive preparation platform pe. Dosto, aaj hum non-tech series mein engineering services prelims examination ke liye एक और नए सब्जेक्ट की शुरुआत कर रहे हैं दैट इज मैटीरियल साइंस ये उन टेन टॉपिक्स में से एक सब्जेक्ट है जो किसी भी ब्रांच के लिए सेम है चाहे आप सिविल से हो मैकेनिकल से हो इलेक्ट्रिकल से हो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स से हो अगर आप इंजीनियरिंग सर्विसेज 2023 की प्रिपरेशन कर रहे हैं तो ये सीरीज आपके लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होने वाली है क्योंकि ये सीरीज लास्ट मोमेंट तक जब आपका एग्जाम बहुत क्लोज होगा तब तक आपको गाइड करेगी सपोर्ट करेगी इसमें हम टेक्निकल कॉन्सेप्ट्स भी डिस्कस कर रहे हैं और काफ़ी एग्जॉस्टिवली डिस्कस कर रहे हैं और इसमें हम काफ़ी सारे क्वेश्चंस भी करेंगे आगे चल के सो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद मटेरियल साइंस दैट इज अ वेरी ट्रिकी सब्जेक्ट स्पेशली फॉर दोज स्टूडेंट्स हु आर नॉट दैट वेल इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर इलेक्ट्रिकल कैंडिडेट्स इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कैंडिडेट्स द पोर्शन विच इज कॉमन इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर core subject uh, electrical materials in their uh, paper 2 so they have they are little comfortable in that area at the same time people who are from civil and mechanical they are little more comfortable in those areas which are related to civil engineering or mechanical engineering so there is a balance in this subject there is a balance some new topics electrical and electronics candidates has to read and some new topics civil and mechanical students have to read So everybody who is joining me live, just quickly confirm your presence in the comment section and tell me whether my audio, visual quality, everything is clear so that we can start. Let me just brief you. The ideal duration for this session is going to be approximately forty-five minutes. And today we'll be talking about dielectric materials. Dielectric materials are one of the major portion for this subject from where questions are being asked. And today we'll be focusing on mechanism of polarization in dielectric materials. So everybody who is joining me live, just tell me yes or no. Are able to follow me? Some of you may be joining me for the first time, so there is a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ashutosh. As you can see on the screen, I have 11 plus years of teaching experience, completed MTech from IIT BHU in 2010. I have written a couple of books on engineering ethics and power system, and these are my areas of expertise. Before we start the session, there are some important uh, notifications for you, so that you can get the best guidance for your preparation. You can attend the Gate 2023 Rank Booster series, which is all about revising the important subjects. Every Tuesday and Wednesday, the classes are conducted, and you can join these classes live on the Baiju's Exam Prep app. For this, you have to download the Baiju's Exam Prep app to attend the classes. Next, we have a new series on Gate app for Gate 2024 aspirants. This series will be focusing on. the fundamental concepts it is a fundamental series and for gate 2023 we have a rank booster series for all these classes join live sessions on myju's exam prep app for gate 2024 fundamental series if you want to build a solid conceptual framework for 2024 examination then this is the right series for you so join live sessions on myju's exam prep every thursday and friday just mark your calendar Go to the Baiju's Exam Prep app. You will get all the details. What is going to be the study plan for all these classes? You will be getting the complete information. So let us start with the dielectric materials. Before we start, let us understand. See, major discussion is going to be in English. So if anybody is there who is not that much comfortable in English language, you can just tell me right, right there, and I will be telling you the concept again in Hindi also. Okay. So it is going to be a mixed language session. Hindi and English both, but majorly I will be speaking in English only. So let us first focus and understand that what is a dielectric material. When you talk about the dielectric material, the major confusion is what is a dielectric material and what is an insulator. So let me just tell you that dielectrics and insulators they are the two faces of the same coin. the same class of material we are defining sometimes as dielectrics and sometimes as insulator 
So what is the criteria when we define that particular material as dielectrics and when we define that particular material as insulator? The criteria is on the basis of their application. When the application is about the energy storing capability, energy storing capability, if it, this is the application, then we are defining that class of material as dielectrics. I will give you a simple example of a parallel plate capacitor. Suppose you have a parallel plate capacitor. Suppose the separation between the two plates is G, the area of the plate is A. So how you are defining the capacitance? It is simply epsilon naught A by D. But now I am not satisfied with the performance of this capacitor, parallel plate capacitor. I want to increase its capacity. So how I am going to increase the capacity? I will introduce, I will introduce some dielectric material between the two plates of the parallel plate capacitor. Now this material is going to have some dielectric constant, suppose it is epsilon r. So now the capacitance will become epsilon naught epsilon r a by d. And obviously this epsilon r is going to be a greater than one value. So you can say the capacitance has now increased. When the capacitance has increased, you can understand the energy stored in the capacitor is also going to increase that is half cv square. So by introducing a dielectric material between the two parallel plates of the capacitor, we are able to increase the energy stored by that capacitor. So when your interest and the application is about energy storing capability, then we are defining that material as dielectrics. When we are going to define as insulator, now insulator is again a non-conducting material which provides electrical isolation. So when your application is to provide electrical isolation, then we are defining that same class of material as insulator. Thank you so much, Abno sir, for coming in the session. So all the candidates who are live with me, just quickly say hi to Abno sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now let us talk about the parameters of dielectric. Suppose you have to define the unique properties of the dielectric. On what basis you are going to define the unique properties of the dielectric? Definitely we have to define some parameters. Basically there are four basic parameters of dielectrics. The first one is dielectric constant. The second one is dipole moment. Third is polarization and the fourth one is polarizability. Let us first talk about dielectric constant. How we are defining the dielectric constant? Dielectric constant we are defining as the ratio of electric field density D and the electric field intensity E. I hope you understand the difference between electric field density and electric field in intensity. If not, let me give you some idea. Suppose you talk about the Gauss law. What the Gauss law says? Gauss law says that closed surface integration D dot ds is, in, is equal to the total charge enclosed by the closed surface. This is the Gauss law. And for the, for the force equation in an external electric field, you have the equation F is equal to Q into E. So how we are differentiating between the electric field density and electric field intensity? Now please understand. If you see, let me use a better color. When you talk about electric field density, it gives you the strength of the field, strength of the field in terms of cause or you say source cause or source because what is this charge enclosed this charge enclosed is nothing but the very source of that electric field and what about the electric field intensity electric field intensity also gives you the strength of the field strength of the field 
in terms of effect that is the consequence consequence of that source the source is charge and what is the effect of that charge the effect of that charge is force is it clear everybody just tell me in the comment section for example suppose there are two regions this is region 1 and this is region 2 let me give you a little more clarity now this region 1 there is no field there is no field and this region 2 there is some field suppose there is a charge sitting in the region 1 where there is no field when there is no field so there is no force experienced by this charge in region 1 but the moment this charge gets or enters into this region 2 because there is a field it will experience some force so how you are defining a field you are defining a field as a force in waiting it is a force in waiting so we can say that force is the effect or the consequence of a field what is the source of the field the source of the field is charge enclosed what is the consequence or the effect of the field that is nothing but the force itself so this is how you differentiate between the electric field density and electric field intensity is it clear everybody now the unit of this electric field density is coulombs per meter square it should be capital c coulombs per meter square and the unit of electric field intensity is volts per meter this is volts per meter is it clear everybody now this uh, yes this dielectric constant we are defining as epsilon naught epsilon r where epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space and it has a standard fixed value that is 8.85 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter whereas epsilon r is a ratio so it has no unit because it is a ratio and what this epsilon r defines i have just told you the example of parallel plate capacitor once you have the dielectrics between the parallel plates of the capacitor the energy storing capacity of the capacitor is going to be increased it means what epsilon r gives you a measure of the capacity of the medium or material to store the electric field energy if you have a material whose dielectric constant is going to be high then it is going to store more amount of electric field energy this is how we understand the dielectric constant epsilon let us come to the next parameter that is dipole moment before you talk about dipole moment it is important to understand a dipole first you understand what is a dipole so we are defining a dipole as when two equal and opposite charges are separated by a very small distance it should be very small distance why i have underlined very small you will understand in just few moments then this system thereby acts as a dipole we are talking about this as a system a system of two equal and opposite charges separated by some distance that is a very small distance now this positive charge and this negative charge is separated by a small distance d obviously there will be a force of attraction between them yes or no there will be electrostatic force of attraction between them the positive and negative charge they are going to attract each other but still they are not getting collapsed because of the interatomic forces coming into the picture the interatomic forces are going to counterbalance the force of attraction electrostatic force of attraction between these positive and negative charges and this is the reason dipole system has a must condition that the distance between or separation between these two equal and opposite charges is to be very small is it clear everybody <coughs> are you able to follow this just tell me yes or no now coming to dipole moment dipole moment is given as the product of 
the individual charge and the separation between them it is a vector quantity and obviously its unit is going to be coulombs meter as mentioned here or day by now day by is a unit for dipole moment which is used at the atomic level because if you see coulombs is going to be a very large quantity in terms of charge you see the charge of one electron so you can understand one coulomb is going to be a very large charge so when we are talking about the dipole moment at the atomic level we are interested in a unit which is suitable okay which is suitable so we are using the unit as day by that is 3.33 10 to the power minus 30 coulombs meter is it clear everybody just tell me yes or no in the comment section yes everyone just tell me in the comment section are you able to follow this just give me a moment okay so now let us talk about polarization P. Just give me a moment. Okay. So no issue, no issue. Listen. Now let us define polarization. How we are defining the polarization? So let me just give you a brief idea how polarization is going to function. Suppose you have a dielectric material like this. Suppose initially there is no external electric field. The external electric field is 0. If the external electric field is 0, okay, then the dipoles are going to be oriented in the random manner. This may be the case. Is it clear? Now, if you are going to apply some external field so that these dipoles start aligning in the direction of external field. This is the second case. Now, there is a non-zero electric field. Now, these dipoles are going to be oriented in the direction of external electric field. And this phenomena we are defining as the polarization of dielectric materials. Is it clear everybody? <clears throat> Is it clear? Now, how we are defining the polarization? We are defining the polarization as the total, total dipole moment per unit volume. Per unit volume. It means what we will do? We will take the summation of all these dipole moments and we will divide it by the volume. So, this is the summation of summation of all the individual dipole moments divided by the volume. Now, if we are defining n as the number of dipoles in per unit volume, so how we can relate polarization P? This polarization P is going to be number of dipoles per unit volume multiplied by the individual dipole moment of a dipole. This is how we are going to relate the polarization with dipole moment P. Is it clear everybody? Yes, everyone. Okay. Now, let us talk about the total electric flux density inside the material. As I have given you the example, if you see, if I ask you, what is the electric field density inside this material? Now, this electric field density inside the material is going to be a summation of two components. The first one is epsilon naught E, that is due to the externally applied electric field, whereas the second component, that is the polarization, all these are vector quantities, this is because of the material getting polarized. Now, we have another expression 
for defining the electric field density D as epsilon naught epsilon R E. So, if you just equate these two equations, you will get epsilon naught epsilon R E is equal to epsilon naught E plus P. If you simplify this, you will get P is equal to epsilon naught epsilon R minus 1 E. This is one important equation for your examination. We are defining one more parameter that is defined as electrical susceptibility. Electrical susceptibility. Electrical susceptibility we are defining as xi e that is epsilon r minus 1. So, if you want then you can write the polarization P as epsilon naught xi e e. So, this is one more expression for your polarization. Is it clear everybody? Just tell me in the comment section. Are you able to follow this? Now, let us talk about polarizability. But before that, let me just give you some idea about this electrical susceptibility. What is the physical significance of this parameter that is electrical susceptibility. Now, suppose I am asking you to put the value of this electric field intensity as 1 volt per meter. What does it mean? It says that the polarization will be equal to epsilon naught xi e. Epsilon naught is a constant. It means for unit electric field, unit external electric field, xi e that is the electrical susceptibility of the material gives you the amount of polarization in the material. So, xi e basically gives you the information about the degree of polarization for a given field, for a given field. Is it clear everybody? Yes. It means basically how much that uh, material can be polarized in the presence of a given electric field. Now, coming to polarizability, how we are defining the polarizability, let us try to understand. Suppose you have an atom. Now, that atom is having a center of positive charge that is nothing but the nucleus and the center of electron clouds is supposed to be coinciding with the positive center. So, when the external electric field is 0, the electron cloud center that is negatively charged okay, and the positive center that is the nucleus is are going to be coinciding with each other. But when you apply some external electric field, the positive center is going to displace with respect to the negatively charged center. Yes or no? Because of the separation between these two positively charged and negatively charged centers, you will get some induced dipole moment. Induced dipole moment. Now, this induced dipole moment is going to be directly proportional to the separation between the center of positive and negative charge. Why? Because the charge of the total charge of the nucleus that is the total positive charge of the atom and the total negative charge of the atom is going to be constant. It is not going to be changing. So, only the distance or the separation between these two centers of positive and negative charge will define that how much dipole moment has been induced. So, if you see this separation D is directly proportional to the applied electric field. If you apply a large electric field, the separation is going to be more. Separation is going to be more means more dipole moment. So, can we say that this induced dipole moment is directly proportional to the applied electric field? Yes. So, if we remove the proportionality constant, we are writing alpha in new parameter. Alpha is defined as the polarizability. Alpha is defined as the 
polarizability. Now, some of you might be having a confusion in understanding the role between xi e and alpha. Sir, you are saying xi e represents the degree of polarization in the material. At the same time, you are saying, sir, alpha represents the amount of dipole movement which is developed if an external field is applied. So, both looks like same. My friend, even though both looks like same, but there is a difference. The difference is when you talk about polarizability, you are talking at the atomic level. You are talking one atom at a time. But when you talk about the polarizability, you are talking the material as a whole. This is the difference. I hope it is clear. Yes. Now, let us talk about the mechanism of polarizations. Mechanism of polarization. Let me give you one more expression for this. Let me add one slide here. Let me add one slide here. Yes. <clears throat> now, if you observe, we have just seen that the induced dipole moment is equal to alpha into E. This is one equation. How we are defining the polarization? Polarization we are defining as number of dipole moments per unit volume multiplied by the individual dipole moment. So, if you want to see the total polarization inside the material, this is going to be N alpha E. So, this is another important expression for you for examination. Again, if you want, then you can correlate the electrical susceptibility and the polarizability. How? This is one equation for polarization, but you have another expression for polarization that is epsilon naught xi e e. Now, if this is equation 1 and this is equation 2, from equation 1 and 2, you can write epsilon naught xi e e is equal to n alpha e. So, this e is going to be cancelled. You can write xi naught epsilon naught xi e is equal to n alpha or you can write alpha as epsilon naught xi e upon n. If you want, then you can put the value for xi e as epsilon r minus 1 and you can relate the polarizability with the dielectric constant also. Is it clear everybody? Are able to follow this? Let us go to the mechanism of polarization. So, basically there are four basic mechanisms of polarization. The first one is electronic polarization. The name itself tells you that it is because of electrons, something because of electrons. Then you have ionic polarization. Ionic polarization also tells you by its name only that there is something related to the ions. Then you have orientational polarization. Orientational polarization as the name indicates is because of the very orientation of the molecule. Then we have a space charge or interfacial polarization that is because of the vacancies and defects in the material. So, let us talk about the electronic polarization. <coughs> electronic polarization is because of the displacement or the separation between the center of <coughs> positive charge and center of negatively charged electron cloud because of the application of the external electric field. We have just seen that. Is it clear everybody? So, we are defining it as a result because of the displacement of the negatively charged electron cloud with respect to the positively charged nucleus. Now, now there is a conflict. Just now I have said that electronic polarization is because of the separation between the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electron cloud center. Now, I am saying no, it is only the displacement of negatively charged electron cloud with respect to the posit positively charged nucleus. It means you are assuming that positively charged nucleus is fixed and the negatively charged electron cloud center is getting displaced. How it is possible? It is not the fact. The fact is that both the positively charged nucleus 
and the center of negatively charged electron cloud is going to be displaced. But because the nucleus is very heavy in comparison to the electrons and that is the reason we are assuming right now that the center of positively charged nucleus is not getting displaced but the center of negatively charged electron cloud is getting displaced with respect to the heavy nucleus. So, this is our assumption. Further, we are saying this type of polarization occurs in those materials having no interaction between the molecules. For example, inert gas, gases are going to be the best example. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chandra Bhanu. Okay. No, it's okay, it's okay, Chandra Bhanu. Listen, listen, listen. So, why, why it is saying that it occurs in only those materials where there is no interaction between the molecules? The reason is, the reason is, if there is other interaction present, then we are not able to observe the electronic polarization properly. That is the reason we are assuming that there is no interaction. Always there will be interaction. Always there will be some interaction. But the best possible case is inert gases. So, if you talk about electronic polarization, you can see this picture. When the electric field is 0, the center of positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electron cloud, it is going to be coinciding. When the electric field is non-zero, then there is a separation between the center of negatively charged electron cloud and the positively charged center. Okay. Now, I want to ask you, you are saying, sir, the positively charged center is getting displaced by an amount x. Why? Why not more than x and why not less than x? The reason is, at this particular point of time, there are two forces acting on it. One force will be force because of the external electric field and one force is going to be the Coulomb's force because of this negatively charged center. Here I am assuming that negatively charged center is sitting at the fixed place and positively charged is going to displace opposite to our initial assumption. Why? Because actually your electrons are not fixed. They are orbiting in different orbits. So whenever we say the center of negatively charged electron cloud, it is not that much accurate. But when we say the center of positively charged nucleus, it is accurate. So, just for the analysis purpose, we are fixing the negatively charged electron cloud center and we are displacing the positively charged center. I hope it is clear. It's okay, it's okay, Chandra. Thank you so much. But my fundamental question remains same. Why it is not less than x? Why it is not more than x? Why it is exactly stopping at x? The reason is there are two equal, two equal and opposite forces. One because of the external electric field and the second one is because of the Coulomb's force. So, let me just uh, equate these two forces for you so that you understand how electronic polarization is going to be. Suppose I want to write the electrostatic force, so the total positive charge is Z into E, where Z is the atomic number and E is the charge of one electron and this is the external electric field Q into E. Now, I am writing the Coulomb's force. So, it is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught or simply epsilon and this is Q1 that is the total positive charge. Now, the negative charge I have to rationalize. Why I have to rationalize? The reason is the electron is not sitting at the center. The electron is distributed in various orbits. So, when you are talking about x distance radius, then you should only take into account those electrons or negatively charged electrons which are inside that radius x. So, I have to rationalize it. So, I will be rationalizing it as x cube upon r cube, where r cube is the radius of the atom. Now, this is divided by square of the distance between them, that is x square. So, if you simplify this, it is going to be Z E E and this is going to be 1 upon 4 pi 
epsilon naught uh, sorry 1 ze is I, I think it is going to be cancelled it is going to be cancelled just cancel it out so this is going to be cancelled x square is going to cancel this so I am just writing it how we are writing x from here x is going to be 4 pi epsilon sorry not not epsilon not epsilon and this is electric field and you will be getting r cube also so this is r cube and this is epsilon this is how and uh, there will be one ze also it is ze one ze is remaining so this is one ze also so this ze x you are getting like this now if i have to define the dipole moment, the induced dipole moment because of the electronic polarization, this is going to be alpha E E. So, if you compare these two equations, where alpha, the, where this induced dipole moment is nothing but the charge of whether a positively charged center or a negatively charged electron cloud, that is the total positive or total negative charge and separation between them, that is X, that is the induced dipole moment. If you compare it with this equation, because it becomes P, you can identify this value gives you the electronic polarization that is 4 pi epsilon r cube. So, if I have to write the total polarization, how I can write? This is going to be P is equal to N alpha E E. I hope it is clear for all of you. This is electronic polarization. Now, let us talk about the ionic polarization. Ionic polarization is going to be the same phenomena instead of the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electron cloud. Now, the ions are going to be displaced with respect to each other when you apply some electric field. Electric field 0, their locations are fixed. When you apply some electric field, the positive ion and the negative ion that is cation and anion, they are going to be displaced with respect to each other. So, it occurs in the ionic materials having the ionic bonds, opposite, oppositely charged ions getting displaced in the opposite direction. This type of polarization is generally found in the materials having the ionic bonds between dissimilar atoms like alkali halides and the best example is sodium chloride. As you can see here, sodium plus chlori uh, chloride minus this is how they are getting displaced and when the separation is going to be increased, you will be getting some induced dipole moment. Once again, if suppose both electronic and ionic polarizations are present, then you can say the total polarization is going to be a sum of electronic polarization and ionic polarization. So, you can write it as N alpha E plus alpha I E. Now, here the electronic polarization is also independent of the temperature because if you talk about the electronic polarization, electronic polarization is also not depending upon the temperature. Okay? If you see the expression for electronic polarization, there is no term related to the temperature. So, both electronic and ionic polarization, they are independent of the temperature. Now, let us talk about the orientational polarization. Orientational polarization is to be found in the asymmetrical uh, in the materials having the asymmetrical structure, it is generally found in the materials having partially ionic and covalent bonds. The best example is going to be water. It is O minus minus H plus H plus. So, this molecule has a fixed orientation where the angle between these two bonds is somewhere around 104 degrees. So, because of this asymmetrical structure and because of the very orientation, there is a permanent, you can say, a permanent dipole moment, permanent dipole moment. Permanent dipole moment means even if you do not apply any external electric field, then still there will be some polarization in these materials. Now, how we are defining this? We are defining this orientational polarization as N alpha naught E, where alpha naught is P P square 
upon 3 k t, where this p p is the permanent dipole moment. This p p is the permanent dipole moment, k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the temperature. So, you can observe that orientational polarization is going to be depending upon the temperature. Is it clear everybody? Now, suppose you have a situation where electronic, ionic and orientational all the polarizations are present, then what will be the total polarization? In that case, the total polarization is going to be the sum of electronic, ionic and orientational polarization. So, this is N alpha E plus alpha naught, sorry, this is alpha I and this is E plus for P naught, it is N P P square upon 3 K T and this is E. Is it clear everybody? So, this is the expression if you are having all three polarizations present. The last mechanism of polarization is space charge polarization. Space charge polarization, what is happening? Let us understand by this example. Suppose there is a defect or the vacancy like this. Okay. Now, when you apply some external electric field which is non zero, the free charges will start migrating. When the free charges will start migrating, because of this defects or the vacancy, there is a possibility these free charges will get accumulated in this vacancy or the defect. Free electrons accumulated. Once these charges, free electrons or the charges start accumulating in this vacancy or the defects, then it leads to an equivalent image charge. Why image charge is coming into the picture? Because to maintain the neutrality, because earlier there was no charge, but suddenly because of the migration of free electrons or the charges because of the application of electric field, the charge is getting accumulated. So, now this charge has to be neutralized by an equivalent opposite image charge. Because of the development of this image charge and this accumulated charge, there will be some polarization. That polarization we are defining as a space charge polarization. Now, when there is a defect or the vacancy in the materials, these materials are called as multi-phase materials and for multi-phase materials, the total polarization is given as the sum of electronic, ionic orientation and space charge polarization. But if materials are not having lattice vacancies, then those materials are called as single phase materials and for them, there is no space charge polarization, only electronic, ionic and orientational polarization is there. Is it clear everybody? So, this is all from my side for today's session. Thank you so much for watching me uh, live. If you have any confusion, any doubt, please reach out to me. You can send your questions in the comment section of this video. Do not forget to subscribe to Baiju's exam prep for more, more such informative videos. Thank you so much. Take care. Good night.